political editor, KDK-TV. And our special guest is Senator Pam Iovino, the state senator from the 37th Senatorial District. Senator, thank you very much for being with me. I appreciate it. Happy to be here, John. Thank you for the invitation. So let me ask you right off the bat, you are in a very competitive state Senate race in the 37th Senatorial District. That district has only had three Democratic state senators since World War II. You are one of them. And you won a special election 18 months ago. Now you're running for a full four-year term. Why do you want to be reelected as state senator? So I knew even last year during the special that I had the regular cycle election ahead of me in 2020. And so that there would be this very quick turnaround in a, in a tough competitive um, seat, as you have mentioned over decades. And it's to continue my public service, plain and simple, is to serve. Well, you do have quite a career of public service, uh, both in the military and working in the Bush administration. Maybe you could give us a quick biographical preview of all that. Thank you. So um, after graduating from college, I went off to officer candidate school and with what I thought was going to be a four year experience as a ensign and lieutenant junior grade in the Navy turned into 23 years and uh, rising to the rank of captain. And the latter half of that after they sent me to the war college to get my master's degree in national security and strategic studies. I spent the latter half of my career doing congressional liaison uh, between the Pentagon and the Hill. And that led to the, my very first job um, after I left the Navy. And that was as assistant secretary um, at the Department of Veterans Affairs uh, under President George W. Bush. Was that a presidential appointment? It was a presidential appointment and it was a presidential appointment that required Senate confirmation. So. It, it, it's another tier above simply an appointment is uh, requiring the consent of uh, the Senate, the advising consent part of our constitution. Did President Bush know he was nominating a Democrat to this position? I, I have always assumed that that was the case. Um, and I was, uh, I was quite um, clear about that from the time I got the first phone call that it was unlikely, that I was an unlikely candidate even for, to be considered even to be caught in the net. And so, but I, you know, I will credit that his, the process um, by which, you know, led to ultimately my nomination and confirmation is that it had to do with qualifications and ability to step in and do the job. Are you saying 88% of the time you fellow Democrats agree with Republicans on issues in the state Senate? Well, I'm saying that 88% of the time, my vote is aligned with what the, major the Republican majority's um, vote is on it, as opposed to more aligned with what the Democratic, my Democratic caucus vote is. Well, that sounds as if then that you are more likely to vote with Republicans than Democrats. Is that true? Now, I, well, I think that the other thing that it reflects and people and it should, under, should know this too, is that there is more bipartisan um, collaboration going on in Harrisburg than one might think. Yes, there are times when there, is a there are votes and bills and they are strictly along party lines, but it's, um, it's not as dysfunctional as some may think. Well, your opponent has a TV commercial out there in which he accuses you of being one of the most liberal senators in Harrisburg. What you've just told me would seem to belie that. What do you make of the accusation that you are one of the most liberal senators? I liken it to the ad that I, they put up during the special election that said that I was akin to Bernie AOC, and I think Hillary may have been the third, but there was a third, um, basically liberal socialist leaning uh, politician who was proudly in that part of the spectrum. And so I feel like it's, a, it's slapping a name and a face um, on, on an ad without really it being backed by anything. Well, are you a liberal senator? I think I, I use the word pragmatic uh, when, I when I talk, when someone asks me, you know, where do you fall? I think I'm pragmatic. 
moderate. I've interviewed your opponent, uh, Republican Devlin Robinson, who basically says that the reason you're a liberal is that among other things, you support um, groups that favor defunding the police. Do you support defunding the police in Pennsylvania? I do not support defunding the police. And I, I, I think, and I've, I've met regularly with my chiefs of police in uh, all of the departments throughout the 37th districts and had great conversation with them. And I start out by saying, I think it's a very unfortunate term for what is really trying to describe that there are responsibilities and uh, missions, if you will, that fall to the police department. People look to the police department that are really outside of the purview of law enforcement. And so they're not best delivered there. And that's in terms of my understanding of the term and how I use the term defund the police. That's what I'm talking about. But you yourself have never said you support taking monies away from police in uh, the 37th senatorial? Categorically, no. The other issue that he points to, your opponent, your Republican opponent, is that you support taxpayer paid for abortions in Pennsylvania. Is that your position? Well, I support a woman's right to choose what is in her best interest for her health, including her reproductive health. I trust women to do that. And with, with regard to tax, I mean, I was in an incident, you know, I was part of the United States Navy, the Department of Defense for 23 years and the federal government monies could not do that. Um, but I think it is a legitimate healthcare need uh, and that, um, but I, I will go, I follow what is the law with regard to that. Well, I guess the question is, would you support I'm not sure what Pennsylvania law is right now on this. I'm not sure that we do allow taxpayer paid for abortions uh, through Medicaid, medical assistance program. Is that something that you would support? If, well, we're talking about federal. So if we talk about Medicaid, we're talking about a federal program. And so if the question is, would I support the expansion of that I, I would have to see what the actual language was and what the ramifications of it were. Okay, I understand that. I mean, but as far as you know, there hasn't been any bill in Harrisburg that you voted on that would have. I, I know for a fact there's not, and in my 18 months, I know for a fact there's not been a piece of legislation to do that that I have um, voted on. Right. Besides the, uh, the fact that you've been a bipartisan or, or nonpartisan state senator, are there other issues that you point to as, uh, albeit only 18 months in office, but is there something else that you might point to as a success or something you're proud of in your service thus far as state senator? Well, I, I've paid attention to what the district is saying. And from the time I started running up till today, their number one concern can, continues to be health care access to affordable affordable and quality health care. And we're about to potentially see a significant shift in the Supreme Court. And so I'm very proud of a package of bills that I'm a sponsor of and one that I'm actually the uh, prime sponsor of that would pr protect for Pennsylvanians aspects of the Affordable Care Act should there be a court challenge that would overturn ACA. Mm -hmm. Do you see that as a difference with your opponent? I don't know his position on the Affordable Care Act. I would, I would hope that everybody believes that the 23 plus million Americans that have been included on health care is a positive thing for this country, for the economy, for health care, um, for our workforce, for families. Right. I would hope so. I, uh, as you know, I live in the 37th Senatorial District, and I've gotten a lot of mailings from both Devlin Robinson and, I might add, from Pam Iovino. Here's a bunch of them right here. Um, I've also gotten some taxpayer paid for mailings, and I wanted to ask you if you thought it was appropriate to send out, you know, taxpayer paid for mailings like this uh, during a period of time when folks have been voting since mid-September. We, we have very strict... Um 
uh, provisions about when we are, we, you know, go into a, like a dark air, a blackout um, time when we're not allowed to do that. And uh, so we've, we've complied with it to the letter. Uh, you can't do it sooner than 30 days before election day that is anything other than a single issue topic that is a formative, um, informative in some way. The other thing I'll say about that is everything has to be approved um, out of the Senate Secretary's office, which is, that's a partisan position appointment by whomever is in the majority party. So that's all been screened by um, the Republican uh, Senate Secretary's office. I understand that and of course I, I... I understand the rules. It just seems to me that since you are allowed to vote 30 days before an election, that sending literature out, taxpayer paid for literature before, you know, during a period in which people can vote. In fact, I think I just got this one, which I think is taxpayer paid for, um, basically indicating where everybody can vote. Now it's a public service. You can argue that it goes out to all, vo all voters. Um, but it is under your name. It's quite clear it's coming from you. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think that the rules need to be changed? I'm not saying you're not complying with the rules. It just seems to me that since we now have early voting in Pennsylvania, um, that perhaps maybe those rules should be adjusted. And you may be describing something that is, you know, an unintended consequence of and not having thought all the way through the ramifications of what mail-in and over-the-counter voting does to uh, be in compliance with what is the intent and the spirit of that blackout. So it, I, I think you're pointing something out that absolutely should be discussed and, uh, and, and determine whether we, we still are able to do that or not. Yeah. Well, Senator, let me ask you now, as people are voting right this instant, what do you want them to think? When they go in to, to, to vote and they've got that 37th race right in front of them and they see your name on there and your opponent's name, what is it that they should be thinking about as they cast a vote for their next state senator? I, I would like them to be thinking about um, the, 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 my uh, career in public uh -huh. service in its total. Um, the years of uh, whether it was in uniform or serving veterans and in the President George W. Bush administration or in local government now in Harrisburg, that uh, all of that that I bring to serving them and doing the best by them. Well, State Senator Pam Iovino, thank you so very much for spending time with me. I, sorry for those little technological glitches in, the, in between all this, but uh, I appreciate the time you, you gave me today. Thank you again. Thank you, John.